In this video, we'll explore the bass instrument's features and interface by recording a few piano chords for two different song sections using SongZap, letting AutoZap analyze our performance, and allowing the bass AI engine to come up with complementary bassline accompaniments for our parts. We'll then modify these patterns to our liking, explore different permutations, performer settings, and sample packs. We'll even humanize the bass lines further by locking to specific elements of the drum groove and turning on the transitions feature of the bass AI engine. Let's start by creating a new song. And switching to the Arrange page to prepare a couple of song sections, a verse and a chorus, for recording. I'll also delete any segments not needed, but I will leave in the useful counting segment at the start of the song. Tapping and holding on the beat clip of the Arrange Verse segment opens up the Groove Editor for the drums, and I can also loop the segments indefinitely. Now we can prepare the drum parts for our two segments to inspire our recordings. I'll select the Funk Kit, and for the verse I'll call up preset beat G and switch the cymbal sound to a ride. For the chorus I'll go for the same preset, but leave the cymbal sound on hi-hat. On second thought, I'll make the verse ride pattern a little less busy by moving the cymbal control dot to the left, changing its eighths to fourths. We're ready to record now, so long tapping on the loop 1 clip of the verse arranged segment will open up the loop recorder. I'll make sure I'm at the beginning of the verse and that loop track 1 is selected, turn on the metronome. Tapping on the record button lets me check my recording level and practice my chords. Tapping play starts an 8-bit counting and now I can record the first piano idea. Once done, I'll drag the loop window to exactly 8 bars and this will be my verse piano part. Repeating the process for the chorus segment, I'll record a busier piano part, introducing a chord change. And once done, I'll drag the loop window also to 8 bars. It makes sense to change the verse and chorus arrange segments to 8 bars too, now that the parts are recorded. Let's use our piano recordings to run the AutoZap feature and generate the bass parts. Tapping on the Z button from a verse segment opens up the menu, where we can select the source for the analysis and what we want generated. Then tap on Zap Verse, and after a few short seconds, the analysis and composition process is complete. Let's have a look at the bass part and the chord chart generated. The bass part is very minimal, rhythmically mirroring the piano action, but dragging the control dot around quickly creates a busier bass line. You can turn it up a little bit as well. 
hear it better. The chord chart is also pretty accurate. Until the final two bars where the sustain on the piano has resulted in a delayed chord change and my slightly detuned piano resulted in a G minor rather than a G7. Not a problem, we can tap on a chord to open the chord select menu and correct these chords. I'll also switch the notation to flats rather than sharps. I'll then delete the delayed chord on bar 7 and change the A flat chord to a G and the G minor chord to a G7 giving the bass engine some harmonic variation to work with. Also note the B-flat chord on beat 4 of bar 8, where the analysis identified my left-hand passing note. That's cool, we can leave that in. It's time to select a bass sample pack and continue refining the bass line. I'll go for electric bass 2 and play with the bass interface to simplify the part. Single tapping on the control dot locks the direction of travel vertically or horizontally. And tapping on the bass settings button will open up the performance settings for the bass engine. In the performance settings menu I'll choose to have the root position of the bass line at the top of the pattern, but I'll leave the range as it is. Tapping on the Patterns Transition Control Switch reveals the back of the bass cabinet and selecting 12 introduces chromatic transitions on the last beat of every bar. Let's have a quick play with the mixer to balance our instruments and appreciate the bass better. We can now repeat the AutoZap process for the chorus section. Choose Loop Audio 1 as the source. And let's generate bass and pads this time. The chord chart generated this time is perfectly accurate, so it's time for a little experimentation using the bass pattern slider. I'm aiming to mirror the eighths of the hi-hat here in terms of pulse. So I'll tap the hi-hat lock button and then move the control dot some more. I'll also change the root position of the performance settings to middle for this section so that the baseline feels a little less reserved. And I'll introduce pentatonic transitions by tapping the 5 button at the back of the speaker cabinet in the transitions view. You may have noticed I chose to generate both bass and pad parts when I auto zap the chorus section, so why not introduce a little keyboard part to differentiate the chorus further. There we have it, melodic and functional bass parts quickly generated and modified out of two piano loop recordings using SongZap. It's easy to continue shaping the sound of the bass and the overall song production by further exploring the bass sample packs and experimenting with the mixer. Have fun creating supportive bass lines for your songs and show them to your bass buddies. They'll be inspired. <laughs>